It's time for the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. And welcome, brothers, sisters, working class heroes. This is the Rick Smith Show. Thanks so much for being here today on the big program. Lots to get to. Lots to talk about. The Iowa caucus yesterday came off as I think most people expected. Donald Trump uh, came out on top. Um, not not surprising. Anybody anybody shocked? Uh, I think fifty three percent was uh, was the lower end of what I was expecting. I th- I thought he probably should have been near sixty, given the fact that you know the the hype, the free press, uh, as radical as we're told Iowa was supposed to be. Um, we'll see what brings us to Iowa. I mean, there's a lot to get to on this, but Hey, um, and this was my favorite. There's a lot of crazy that's been going on in Iowa in the last couple of weeks, the Trump camp. I don't know if people just aren't paying attention. If we're numb to the insanity, I'm, I'm really not sure, but my favorite, I think my favorite story in all of this was uh, lunatic fringe conspiracy theorist, Laura Loomer. Who big Trump ally, big surrogate, who um, <laughs> said that the weather, because it was it's cold, it's really cold in Iowa, because it's Iowa. Don't know if you know, Iowa is a cold place in January, uh, but evidently, uh, uh, Looney Laura um, said that it's it's because uh, Nikki and her friends in the defense industry are using weather manipulation to make it cold in in January in in Iowa cold in January in Iowa with through weather manipulation by the defense department for Nikki Haley <laughs> against a former president i mean this is this is real deep state stuff here and i love the the fact that you know the victim thing cuz nobody plays victims like conservatives like red hats I think it's in the dye. I think the dye gets into the brain, and I'm not. I'm not really sure, <laughs> but it's 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 quite it's quite quite weird. And you know, the thing is, is, you know, I was watching some of the speeches and and you know, consuming some of the clips coming out of Iowa and some of Trump's speeches and some of the just the craziness. Like, did you know magnets don't work underwater? Um, I I evidently it's one of the things that Trump said, you know, recently that, you know, magnets don't work underwater. You know, give me a glass of water. Let's let me drop it on the magnets. It's the end of the magnet. Really? I think you're um I think you're thinking of something else, but no but no, that that did no. Um uh, evidently he bragged about putting on pants. That's that's something else that scratching of the head. Uh I love the quip. First they say, sir, how do you do it? How do you wake up in the morning and put on your pants? <laughs> he said, oh, well, I, I don't think about it too much. And I don't want to think about it because I, I, if I think about it too much, maybe I won't want to do it. <laughs> and the thing is, is, people show up in the cold in January in Iowa to hear this drivel. This is the stuff that blows my mind. People show up in January in Iowa to listen to this guy and listen to this kind of... And look, you know, the thing is, is I, I get it. It's it's all about mocking uh, uh, Biden. Because uh, he, de- he did that too. He mocked Biden's stutter. And would you expect nothing less from Trump than to mock people? Uh, he mocked Biden's stutter. He mocked John McCain's injuries uh, because, you know, he was, you know, he was all upset that McCain didn't shoot down the Affordable Care Act because, well, you know, it's something about he couldn't raise, you know, he couldn't raise his arm, you know, just mocking the guy. And my, my first thought is, you know, John McCain was a guy, no, he couldn't raise his arm because they broke his, his shoulders and all that. Uh, but there was a guy even couldn't raise his arm, still would have whooped your behind. Probably even still now. And yes, I know he's been, he's passed a, a number of years. But you, know, you stop and you think about just the craziness that, that's come out of this guy and what's happened to our politics. Uh, he, he posted a video uh, that asserted that, you know, that, that God made Trump. 
And I guess, you know, if you're if you're a hyper Christian, you're God made everyone in his own image, except Donald Trump, who was special. And you, know, you just go down the list of all this stuff. I mean, outside of bragging about putting on pants, I at that point, don't, don't you just walk away? Don't you just go enough already? Uh, he bragged about his ability to negotiate. He could have negotiated this out of the Civil War. I'm like, really? That that. Uh, he went on and you know he, he talked about the fact that he uh, uh, he wants to, to free the insurrection or the the not the insurrectionists no no uh, the hostages the January sixth hostages We're gonna free the hostages you know Joe Biden could free the hostages <laughs> and uh, evidently a 17 year old opened fire at a high school in in Iowa killed an 11 year old and injured four students and three staff members before he killed himself and um. Trump said, surprised to see something like that happen in Iowa. But people just need to find a way to get over it. You just got to get, get over it. Yeah, just, just kind of got to get over it. And 53% of people went to the polls and voted for this, this kind of insanity. Said, yeah, this is what we want for four years in the White House. And look, there was a ton of other stuff that just, just blew my mind. Uh, the quote about, I hope the economy collapses, just... You know, really? Um, and I know no one's really paying attention to anything he says anymore because we've all become kind of numb to the to the craziness. We've all become kind of numb to the to the shock value. It's it's no longer there's no longer shock anymore. Like the first time you heard him swear, uh, a politician swore that that never happened before. But there he is using the all the colorful language of George Carlin's seven words you can't say on TV or anywhere else in polite conversation. And that got him a rousing cheer. But what's it done for our discourse? What's it done for our policy? What's it done for our ability to, to move this country in the right direction? How's it hardened and coarsened our politics? We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, state, Iowa State Representative J.D. Scholten is going to be here to talk about what happened to Iowa. And is it the Trump effect that's done this or is it something worse? Quick break. Right back after this. Stick around. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania to the auto factories of Michigan to the modern makers, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. The old factory towns in America's heartland have been taking a beating. Thing is though, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The new CHIPS bill that got passed will bring jobs back home and has already resulted in big announcements of major new factories opening. The American Recovery Package has allowed cities and counties to hire new police officers and firefighters and start rebuilding their communities again. We're finally turning things around after 40 years of screwing over working people. But will we keep moving in the right direction? That's our choice. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts. Prayers. Thoughts and prayers! Trump has helped transform Iowa from a swing state into a GOP stronghold. He carried the state by more than eight points in 2020 
a 14-point swing since former President Barack Obama won it in 2012. No other state has shifted as hard towards Republicans in the same period. And that's that's all true. I don't know that I give Donald Trump that much credit. Sorry, I, I just don't know that I'm, I'm giving him all of that credit. Uh, and here to share some thoughts on, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I've been to Iowa a couple of times. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But the last time I was there, my good friend J.D. Schulten uh, showed me around and, and had some interesting thoughts. That's why I've asked Iowa State Representative uh, J.D. Schulten to come back and share some thoughts with us. J.D., thanks for taking time for us. Yeah, good to be back. Thanks for the invite. So uh, you buying this? You, this, uh, this, you know, hey, uh, you know, Donald Trump did this. Donald Trump made Iowa at this extreme kind of Republican state now. I think that's an oversimplification. Um, you know, I think th there's one county in particular that I love to talk about that what we've seen that voted for Obama in, in 2008 and 2012 and, and in 2020 voted for Trump at almost 70 percent. And to me, that shift is just like that that county exemplifies what happened. And the, what we saw is there's no elected Democrats in that county. Um, talk radio has gotten more um, radical. It used to be just AP News, and now it's it's 10 hours of, of right-wing propaganda a day. And then you also, the, the other component is the mis- and disinformation on Facebook. Uh, Iowa voters are disproportionately more than anybody else in the country or as much as anybody else on Facebook. And you add those things up together, and then you bring in a candidate like Trump and, and saw the shift. Uh, that's, to me, that's that's more or less everything. And you add a lot of the hardship that, that has gone on over the last couple of decades. And this is what we, we talked about as we were going through Iowa and talking to people uh, the, the standard of living has been in decline. Uh, Deindustrialization has hit communities extraordinarily hard, especially in a state like Iowa that was a a make it kind of state, a state that had you know communities that were proud to be uh, you know a factory town, uh, and to have that identity ripped away. That has I think that has more to do with it than everything else. The fact that their identity has been taken away. I don't think there's a, another state that trickle down economics has just just shown how useless it is as it is in in, in Iowa, especially my neck of the woods, northwest Iowa. We're an agriculture state, Sioux City, where I live. We're an immigrant meat packing town since the 1880s, and we see all these CEOs getting record uh, 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 salaries. We have the companies bragging about record profits, and what the salaries of the workers, the men and women who are working in these meatpacking plants before COVID, they're at about 17 bucks, uh, which was the big try to draw to get folks in. Now they're up to 24 bucks post COVID. And, you know, that's for every $50,000 at one of these plants, I, I was told by a city councilwoman, for every $50,000 employee, so that salary and benefits and all that, the, the plant gets eight hundred thousand dollars of pro production out of that that employee wow yeah and you tell me that's right like that and and we feel that here you know and and so did trump capitalize on that yeah but but at the same time like the a huge part of the obama excitement and everything was that change and then when it didn't change the lives that we were hoping for that's what we saw the backlash and where to trumpism so to be what I see is a huge potential movement, especially in the working class, uh, about, and you see it in the strikes happening, the UAW strikes and other strikes happening all throughout the country, and especially here in Iowa. I think there's a, a especially a post Trump kind of revitalization, and I hope the Democrats are up for it. I'm doing everything I can to be there, to be there at that moment, to meet the people where they're at, because I think it's about to happen. And this is why I think what, what Joe Biden is doing is so important. 
Um, you know, I've been saying for a while, I, the thing that I'm thrilled about is his move away from neoliberalism, the fact that yes. we're, we're reshoring manufacturing, the fact that he's, he's, you know, everything he does executive order wise, policy wise, is encouraging people to join and form unions, ensuring that workers get a fair cut of the, the work that's being done, uh, kind of, you know, hearkening back to, you know, my grandparents' generation ensuring that that wages are sufficient to support families and and part of that i think is what you're talking about and i'm, I'm i would like them to, to do more more talking about that uh you know, more right. focusing on on rebuilding that prosperity of work and and the prosperous working class of of, of the past well when, when i go down to my local bar shout out to princes uh you know great conversations and and, you know, it's a split. I get a lot of Republicans there, a lot of Democrats there. And uh, when I talk to a lot of the Republicans, like when we do our deep dives, I'll talk for 20 minutes on how corporations are screwing us over. And a after that, I go, well, this is exactly why I think Joe Biden's the best president in my lifetime. And they look at me in the shock and, and are kind of like, what the heck are you talking about? I go, he's the only president in my lifetime that has taken on competition with his executive order He's put Lena Khan as the FTC chair. He's put uh, Jonathan Cantor as the uh, uh, the head of the DOJ for the antitrust division. And Tim Wu was part of the economic uh, council at the beginning. All these pieces have led up to this moment. And is it, do I want them to continue to go further and way further? Absolutely, but this is the first step. And so what you, you see the comparison between Trump. What did Trump do? He, he gave tax cuts to the super wealthy there's nothing more uh, perfectly set than, and perfectly put that the Republicans did. They gave permanent tax cuts to the corporations and the super wealthy, and they gave working class people temporary yep. tax cuts. Yeah. That's that's it. You know, that's the, that's the sentence right there. That should be the mic drop moment. That should be the moment you go. Yep, right. We we know everything you're about, but but here's the thing. You know, they they talk about deregulation as well. Uh, you know, so yeah. who does deregulation help? It doesn't help you or me. It helps corporate profits. It doesn't exactly. trickle down in higher wages or more jobs. It what what trickles down is uh, less safe working conditions, uh, less safe environmental conditions, uh, less safe you know, uh, you know you know places of, of employment. This is this is the part that we don't get to we don't get to hear enough of. Right, right, and and that's I mean. Food safety is, is like is even an issue because these corporations have so much power and the additives and everything. We, I'll say this right now: with the where like the rural America right now, and it goes beyond rural America because they create the food that we eat. There's the the rural economy, the food we eat, and our political system are unhealthy and they're unsustainable. Right, and that's that's where we're at right now. We need change. We absolutely do, and that's uh, that's, uh, and I think you're 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 right that you know Trump was that backlash to change, and this is why I said in 2016 that Bernie Sanders been the the nominee for the Democrats. I think Sanders would have won hands down, uh, but you know here's here's the thing, uh, I'm concerned that a lot of people think that once Trump is gone, all of the problems that are are facing. Uh, the country are going to be gone too, and I think that's that's wrong because I think yeah. the Republican Party has gone completely off the deep end. Uh, I think oh, the the party as a whole right now um, gets worse. Uh, they're still going to be like in your state, uh, the uh, Republicans attacking public education, uh, attacking you know education funding, you know attacking child labor laws. I mean, did you see the the bill in Indiana that's moving? Yeah. They want to let yeah. children. If you finish eighth grade, you can quit school. If you're 14, go work on that factory farm. How insane is that? And the bill that was here in Iowa last year where they allowed 14-year-old girls to work at bars until 11 p.m., like, just insane and unsafe. Like, yeah. just common sense. What the heck are we doing here? You know? And it's it, – I the frustrating thing for me is being a state legislator and, and working with my colleagues, I don't know where the line is. Because like some of the things they're proposing, like our state quarter is foundation in education. And yet just this week alone, this, the uh, board of directors or the, the board, uh, the director of the, the Department of Education is uh, checking with eight charter schools 
from and seven of them are from out of state that that they want to put public money and they're in, going to either Cedar Rapids or Des Moines. So all these rural taxes, you know, are funneling to private schools that will be only in Cedar Rapids and Des Moines. So, so let me and ask yet, you this, because and yet they get reelected right now, and so, so that's why I think twenty twenty four is such a our backs against the wall for Democrats here in Iowa. So, isn't this a moment for Democrats in Iowa to go to those rural communities and go, hey? They're 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 literally stealing your public schools. They're stealing your local schools. Is there no? I mean, in my rural community, uh, the local school that's that's the center. That's that's oh everything. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But here here's one of the other problems is because all eyes are on Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Georgia, like those those states, and we and we lost the caucuses. There's not the national funding coming into this state. We're, I mean, we're doing everything we can on our own, but like, yeah. there's also like the national narrative and like the national narrative is kind of what got us here in the first place. And so that's, it, it's, it's been tough. And like, I'm one of only two Democrats in the entire Western half of the state. And I'm the only one in Northwest Iowa. So for all my pre-legislative meetings and everything that I've had to endure the past month or so, I'm one of probably 10 in the room that, and I'm the only Democrat. And if I wasn't there, the Democratic message doesn't come out. And that's, it, it, it weighs on you too. And, and so, you know, we're fighting tooth and nail out here, but uh, it's just, uh, we're doing the best we can. I'll say that, or I'm not, at least I am. No, this is this is the thing that, that worries me because Liz Cheney the other day said that you know once the cult of personality goes away and I and I I, I alluded to this a moment ago once the once Trump and the cult cult of personality goes away we can get back to fighting a, on conservative principles and values and I'm looking at what passed for today's conservative principles and values and I got to tell you it, it it's frightening um, and yeah. to be honest it's what got us into the mess that we're in right now you know conservative economics you know supply side voodoo reaganomics is the reason we are where we are it's the reason wages are are have been stagnant for 40 50 years it's the reason we've had deindustrialization it's the reason we've had all of the the problems that we've had over these last uh, several decades uh, and i don't see that it's going to help going forward absolutely and i was at a farm bureau event and they are as far away from democrats as possible right now uh and <laughs> Uh, it, it was great talking to the farmers because they all get it. In fact, one farmer who I know is is uh, Republican, very strong Republican. He was blaming Reagan for a lot of the concentration issues that we were talking about at the meeting. Um, you know, we had a fertilizer plant uh, that the state of Iowa invested a hundred million dollars in on the other side of the state, and with local uh, tax breaks and federal tax breaks, this company got over $500 million of breaks to create a plant on the other side of the state because the big companies like Coke, uh, which owns, there, there's four companies that control 75% of the marketplace in this type of fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer. And the reason why they wanted to start this company is because the big four were pricing out our farmers. So they started it, gave all this money to, well, just last month, Coke bought them out for $3 billion after about four or five years of being in production. And there's nothing more that says what's happening. And, and that's that was all Republican doing. And just, that's it, you know? You, you create, you try to create a solution and with when you deregulate it so anything can happen, and then all of a sudden the thing that you were creating to stop happens. You know, I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day about about the just just that. I said, "Look, you know, the reality is is, you know, when we were younger, you know, we owned our our own parking lots. Uh, we didn't privatize the parking authority. We didn't privatize p prisons. We didn't privatize water and sewer. We didn't privatize, uh, you know, the turnpikes. You know, go down the list, uh, you know, of all of the things that over the last 30, 40 years that we've privatized and profitized. And we're told that we were going to get better, cheaper services. And what turned out to be, uh, it ended up costing us much more. We got crummier services. And in the end, we ended up spending more uh, when we got it back because we had to fix all of it again because they let it, they ran it into the ground for short-term pr profit and short-term gain. And we ended up holding the bag again and again and again. And we've seen this movie over and over, and yet we still keep doing it. And yet we're, we keep, we keep, 
we keep electing people who keep pushing this poison. And and what we're seeing, I, I, we're seeing it here in Iowa for sure, but it's across the nation. Nursing homes, yeah, the oh, privatization. Uh, the you, you know we we had an awful awful situation, which I'm not going to repeat on here, but it was a situation where um, uh, an elderly lady uh, gets sexually assaulted and then gets evicted and sent to a a, a homeless shelter. She did nothing wrong. Oh. The, it, it just awful situation. Iowa is second to last in inspectors per nursing homes in the country. And and we privatize the inspection. It's just absolutely just ridiculous. What are we doing here? Yeah. What are we doing? Well, because they're going to police themselves. You know, they're, they're going to police themselves. They're going to do what's in their best interests. And, yeah. and they, they are. They're going to they're going to come. So last question I've got. Is there a way forward? And, and you know, is 2024 uh, the answer going to help move us forward? Thoughts? I, I am, uh, like I said, I am convinced there's a potential for a massive, massive movement. And so I think it, I, I'm not a predictor. I'm not anything like that. But that is what I'm working on. I, I don't know where the, the line's going to cross, where, where it's going to happen. But what I'm preparing for is 2026, 2028. I think there's going to be a massive movement here in the U.S. because we are we are living in the second gilded age. It's the haves and the haves not, and the haves are getting more, and the rest of us are getting left behind. You and so, right. do we need Democrats to to figure out the message on this and to start broadening uh, uh, the spectrum of who we target when we we try to get voters? Absolutely, because you look at the Senate. The Senate's the Senate's set. You know, we can complain all we want that thirty percent uh, of the country or the population. 70% of the population is in 15 states. So that means 70% of the Senate is only 30% of the population. So, like, it, we're not expanding there. So we have to do better in states like Iowa. And so that is what I'm so passionate about, is, is making sure that, that we continue to fight and, and that the state of Iowa bounces back to being a proudly purple state. Well, I'm right there with you. I, 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 look, I... I... One of my one of the, my favorite people, Tom Harkin, was was a senator from Iowa for years. I would love to see someone like Senator Harkin back uh, in the Senate from Iowa, uh, other than the two crazy people you've got right now. Uh, but JD, I appreciate the time. Would be great to see JD Shulton in the Senate uh, someday. But JD, <laughs> appreciate the time. Always always good talking. Thank with you. you. Thanks, Ray. Uh, Have a great night, JD Shulton. I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, what's it going to take? What's it going to take to move us uh, back in a direction where we? Oh, I don't know. Come somewhere near the sane line. Email me, Rick at the Rick Smith I want to hear your thoughts. For those of you watching on our free speech TV show, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you back here uh, next time. Everyone on, on the radio affiliates. We'll take a quick break back after this for everyone. If you miss any portion of the program, always grab the podcast. You can find that at the Rick Smith show.com. <laughs>